There's no question that Immortan Joe is the greatest villain in the Mad Max series. Even apart from his iconic mask and the voice it gives him, he's an extremely intelligent and deadly threat. Even just seeing how his war boys fight and worship him tells you everything you need to know about why this man, and this man alone, controls one of the only reliable sources of water left. And like all good villains, he just has a certain presence to him that commands the audience's attention whenever he's on screen. In fact, He's considered such a good villain that many believe he's not only the best villain in the Mad Max series, but one of the best villains of the entire 2010s. That's how great he is. But with all of that firmly established, one can't help but wonder, who was the best villain of the original Mad Max trilogy? Which one of them really makes for the best bad guy when not going up against the likes of Immortan Joe? And today, I'd like to try and answer that question as best I can. And obviously there will be some major spoilers for the Mad Max series ahead, so in case you don't want something ruined, you might just want to come back to this video another day. Okay. So if you were to ask most people who the best villain in the original Mad Max trilogy was, they would probably say, hands down, Lord Humongous from Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. And while I can see why they would say that, for my personal vote, I would actually have to go with Toe Cutter from the original Mad Max movie. Because while Lord Humongous perfectly does his job of being an incredibly dangerous threat and is unquestionably smart, the thing is that there's barely any characterization to him. All we know about him is that he's an excellent shot, is extremely smart and sadistic, and at some point was horribly burned. Now, if you're a frequent watcher of my channel, you'll know that I'm perfectly okay with villains who don't have the most complex motivations. And I'm not trying to argue here that Lord Humongous is a bad villain. Quite the contrary. Because as I just said, he checks all the boxes of what a bad guy should be and does a very good job at it. He is a good villain. All I'm saying is that when compared to the other villains in the trilogy, Toe Cutter is the best one overall. Especially because in Beyond Thunderdome, it's actually pretty difficult to tell who the villain is supposed to be. At first, Master Blaster makes for a good bad guy, but after only one fight, Blaster is dead and Master joins the good guys so they barely count as villains. While on the flip side, Anti-Entity does have all the makings of a good villain, being smart, calculating, and clearly defined motivations behind her actions, but in the end, her true character is a little too hard to determine, and her screen time too limited for her to be in the same league as Lord Humongous and Toe Cutter especially because she lets Max go at the end, even though she has nothing to gain from it. Again, had she more screen time, she probably would have been a better villain, or even anti-villain, but ultimately the movie ends up working against her in that department. But to get back to Toe Cutter, and before anybody says it, no. The reason I believe he's the best villain in the Mad Max series isn't because he's the only bad guy that has a personal rivalry with Max. I mean, it does help, but considering Max isn't involved with the main conflict of either sequel, it makes sense he wouldn't have any beef with the bad guy. Instead, the reason I believe Toe Cutter is the best villain is because in many ways, He's the most memorable. 
He's the feared leader of a motorcycle gang, taking advantage of the crumbling civilization around him to get away with all the things he wanted to do, but until recently hadn't been able to. And honestly, his characterization is terrifying, having absolutely no morals, to the point that he berates a fellow gang member for hesitating to set a man on fire, and chases down and murders a woman and child for the pettiest of reasons. To put it simply, in the movie it's established that not only are the police aware of this guy, but that they are in many ways afraid of him. And based off his behavior, it's easy to see exactly why that is. Because, once again, this man is totally insane. His only two goals in life are to cause as much chaos and anarchy in an already crumbling world as possible, and that he gets whatever he wants at any particular moment. Again, this is a man with zero scruples, and if the look in his eye doesn't tell you that, then his scenes of pilfering and attacking innocent people definitely will. He may put on a good act when he wants to, but there's always something about him that betrays just how horrible and brutal he really is. But on top of that, he's also very intelligent. Because let's face it, any man who can lead a gang as effectively as he does, all the while managing to evade the police, even if they aren't all that good anymore, does take some brains. But perhaps the moment that best displays his smarter side is when he leads Max into a trap that actually works, and then tells his lackey to just finish him off instead of toying with him, which seconds later he's proven absolutely right about. And for extra points, he then tries to run instead of engaging with him because he's obviously realized that Max is on the warpath. But what makes that scene so significant is that up until that point, Toe Cutter had only shown himself to be an extremely impulsive, petty, and passionate man who goes after, tortures, and kills people for the stupidest reasons and sometimes just because he feels like it. So the fact that he's actually smart enough to want Max dead and not bother making him pay when he realizes he's a genuine threat to him and out for his blood, as well as successfully lures him into a trap that had they done it his way would have worked, shows that he's not only a psychotic, sadistic gang leader, but a very smart one at that. He knows when to quit playing games. And I'm sorry to say it, but Lord Humongous simply has none of that. Sure, he does have an imposing presence and is shown to be extremely smart and even well-educated, but that's about all there is to him. I mean, that ambiguity arguably makes him more terrifying, but the point still stands that we don't know what motivates him, we don't know if he's desperate, insane, plain evil, or any combination thereof. All we do know is that he wants oil and will do anything to get it. To put it simply, he simply doesn't have the personality that Toe Cutter does. And to perhaps best demonstrate that, let's take a look at their respective henchmen. Because both movies almost seem more interested in focusing on the lackeys of the villain rather than the villains themselves. But in Mad Max, whenever Toe Cutter and Johnny share a scene together, the focus is always on Toe Cutter. He is always the center of attention always the one the audience is watching. Even in the movie itself, it's made clear that Johnny could never even hope to live up to Toe Cutter's, quote, accomplishments. While on the flip side, whenever Lord Humongous and Wes share a scene together, it's always Wes that has more focus and the one more likely to grab the audience's attention. Because simply put, 
Wes is the one that feels more like a traditional villain here. He's much angrier and passionate, has a personal beef with the good guys, and even a reason why he's out for their blood beyond wanting the gasoline. To put it simply, there's a reason Wes was once ranked as the greatest villain sidekick of all time, because he's one of the few villain henchmen to have a much more personal presence in their movie than the actual villain. Because again, while Lord Humongous does make for a good and effective villain, the fact still remains that all we see of his face is a hockey mask, and that's actually a very accurate reflection of his character. Just a random, nameless person with very few things to give him a distinct personality. In many ways, the most memorable thing about him is that he's the one pulling Wes's leash. Now I know some will point out that in early drafts of Mad Max 2, Lord Humongous was supposed to be Max's cop buddy Goose, who went insane after being burned by Toe Cutter, and that his lack of characterization probably comes from that. And while that is all true, that doesn't change the fact that Humongous is written with very little individuality. Not that he really needs it, but that is something Toe Cutter still has plenty of. Though honestly, I do believe a lot of credit for his effective and memorable nature does belong to Hugh Key Barnes' performance. Because as Star Wars has gloriously shown, having a classically trained Shakespearean actor playing the bad guy in a science fiction movie can often lead to great results. And just as that has been proven with the Emperor, the same is also true for Toe Cutter, and even a Morton Joe later down the line. What I'm trying to say here is, Hugh Keyes Barnes completely gets the character, and the way he portrays him is a major reason he evokes the presence and fear that he does in the audience. He even deliberately changed his accent in almost every scene because he specifically wanted the character to come across as insane. And even when he's not doing that, he most definitely accomplishes that particular task. But once again, his performance is downright chilling. Even when Toe Cutter's being friendly, you always get the feeling that he's a predator stalking his prey. And more often than not, that's exactly what he is. And once again, the devil is in the details here. Because a subtle moment that really shows his evil nature is when he doesn't even turn around and look after he runs over Max's family. He just keeps going as if he only ran over a tin can. As I already said, Hugh Key's barn completely plays the character for maximum effort, and it's on a level that the series wouldn't reach again until the likes of a Morton Joe, where he got to prove that he could still pull it all off just as effectively. To put it all simply, what makes Toe Cutter stand out so much from the other villains in the Mad Max trilogy is not only how much characterization he has, but how it adds to his effectiveness as a villain on top of that. Because on the one hand, he's just a psychotic gang leader, but we also get to see why he is their leader on top of that. And not to mention, there's also plenty of scenes highlighting just how cruel evil, and remorseless he really is, which makes the audience remember him. Again, no matter who's on screen at any given time, he is always the center of attention, to the point that some may even rewatch the film just for him. And that is not something every villain can lay claim to. And finally, it must also be mentioned that had it not been for him and his actions, everything in the Mad Max universe would have played out completely differently. Because as I mentioned earlier, he's the only villain to have a personal beef with Max, 
which, among other things, makes their final confrontation a rarity for the series. Because Max will stop at nothing to get him, and Toe Cutter knows it. To the point that even if you can't see his face, you can tell that his only thought is of escape. Not revenge, not a backup plan, just plain escape. And it's that very desperation that causes him to screw up. But his legacy lived on much longer than he did. Because as I just said, in effect, Tollcutter himself is responsible for everything Max does in the series afterwards, both good and bad. And though that's not why I'm arguing he was the best villain of the trilogy, one still has to admit he deserves recognition, if only for that alone. Alright, I think I've proven my point with this. So now I'd like to hear what you guys think. Do you believe that Toe Cutter is the best villain in the original Mad Max trilogy? Or do you believe that distinction belongs to somebody else? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind, you don't have to agree with anything I said in this video just because you watched it. You're entitled to your own opinion, and if you think I've got everything about all the Mad Max villains wrong, that is absolutely okay. And thank you all for watching. I very appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.